Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Let's all stand up. Let's praise the Lord in his house this morning. I got a call to worship this morning. It says this. Well, if I can get it right. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know the Lord. He is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Let's praise the Lord in his house today. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who takes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? Sing it out. It's amazing. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your
Welcome everybody online. Thank you for watching and tuning in this morning. And I hope you guys are ready to worship. It's going to be a great day uh, as we uh, worship together. I just want you to know that uh, when Stephen gets up here and uh, he has a plan, and so when he reads, make a joyful noise. He's talking about some of you guys, make a joyful noise, but uh, don't take it personally. Um, anyway, so sing, we want to sing this morning, uh, worship uh, very loudest that we can because we're worshiping a great and mighty God. So please do that, whether you're here or online, uh, let's give him our very best. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it was, it's great being here, it's great being safe. I know the weather's been kind of crazy, I'm glad uh, that you guys are safe from uh, last night and the storms coming through, uh, but again, another reminder that God... Uh, is present. He takes care of us even in the midst of the storm. And so I'm grateful for that. Um, I do want to say this. If, if you're a guest with us, we want you to know that you're valuable to us and thankful for you, whether you're online watching uh, for the first time or here. And, uh, and there are ways that we would love for you to connect with us. If you're online, you can go to uh, our webpage and, uh, and connect that way uh, and find our uh, connect card and sign up and let us know a little bit more about you, how we can reach out to you. And here also, you can use your phone, take a picture of the QR code up here on the screen and, uh, and that will uh, get you to our connect card. You can fill it out that way and send it to us. You can call us or uh, if you have anything that we can uh, do for you, we'd love to be able to help you out and uh, be able to walk with you in this journey. So connect with us. Let us know a little bit more about you and how we can reach out to you guys. So again, thank you for being here this morning. This also today is our uh, Operation Christmas Child kickoff day. Uh, and so one of the greatest ministries I think that we do and, uh, and are part of Operation Christmas Child is a, uh, the chance that we have as a church to join with others all over the country, all over the world, as we send out uh, gifts, shoeboxes, to places that we probably would not be able to go to physically. Many times they're closed to the gospel totally. And so we're able to send out Christmas uh, gifts, shoeboxes, all over the world to share the gospel with kids and their families. Such an incredible ministry, and we're so thankful for that. We have a quick video, and then I'll come right back up and just uh, encourage us and challenge us a little bit more uh, with this ministry. Three, two, yeah. At the count of three, when children open the shoeboxes, they're so excited. I mean, it's just been incredible. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. And that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. God will bless and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. So, so many ways that you can be a part of Operation Christmas Child and want to encourage you to uh, challenge yourself this year. If you've done one before, if you did one last year, then double that and uh, see how many shoeboxes you can pack this year. Again, it's not just about giving kids a gift, it's about sharing the gospel, and that's what they get when they get one of those shoeboxes, and not only for them, but for their family. Matter of fact, if you get a chance, our Hispanic pastor, uh, Charlie, uh, he, was, he was impacted by Operation Christmas Child when he was a kid, and so he has an incredible testimony of how powerful that is. So uh, I want to encourage you as a church, let's be a part of this, and let's, uh, let's get as many boxes as we can so that we can send out and have as many people as possible hear the gospel and, uh, and so November 15th is the, um, is the collection Sunday, so you have a few weeks, November 15th, and we're going to bring our boxes back here, we're going to pray over them, and we're going to send them on uh, their way, and it's just going to be a, a great time of, of rejoicing and prayer over those boxes. But here's something that's interesting too, and uh, I want you to be aware of this, because of COVID and all kinds of stuff, uh, you also have the opportunity, if this is easier for you or safer for you, I guess, is to go online to their website. You can actually pack a box virtually. And so you can just spend a certain amount of money, I think it's like $30, and you can pick from different things of what you want in that box. And, uh, and they'll pack that box and uh, make that box 
and they'll send it off. So that's a great option for you guys. So look online and, and find that information. But let us know if you do that. We want to make sure we know how many are being sent out. Uh, you can just send us an email or call us. But, but that is a great option. So church, let's do it. Let's uh, be a, a light through Operation Christmas Child. And let's pack those shoe boxes. all right? Well, let's pray together. And then after that, we'll continue on with our worship time. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. What an incredible time to be able to come together as the body of Christ once again and to worship you. And so for everyone here, God, and for those watching online, I pray that our hearts are tuned into you. Father, that we're focused in on who you are, and we're going to give you our very best this morning. Holy Spirit, move and work in this place. Uh, we want to experience you in a powerful way, not just so we uh, can do that for ourselves, but that we can be uh, energized for the ministry that you have for us. So speak to us today, work in our hearts and our lives, work in this church, and we pray that you get all the honor and glory. Thank you for Operation Christmas Child. I pray right now, God, that you would just lay it upon our hearts uh, how many of those boxes we're to fill. And God, you have specific kids all over this world that you know already are going to get those boxes. And may we be faithful. May we be obedient and do what you've called us to do. And may we serve you as we uh, pack those boxes. And uh, Father, we pray that you just reach the world. We love you. We thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's together. Psalm 146.2 tells us, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. And I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. So this is our theme today is kind of sing praise, sing that joyful noise. And let's give honor to an amazing God. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in just a tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all Oh, pray. 
God praise for that. Psalm 51 says, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. And his praise will ever be on my lips this morning. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my
be seated during this time as we pray together. Lord, we do thank you for being such an amazing God, cares for his people, provides for us, and uh, God, you've given us salvation. So God, as we sing these songs this morning, God, you're worthy of all the praise we can lift this morning. God, we thank you for the opportunity to meet together here. It's not everyone in the world gets that opportunity, but God, you've given us a chance to meet together. And uh, God, I pray this morning as we open your word that you would uh, show us who you want us to be. That God, we would have clarity and confidence in who you are. That God, we would see your character and your heart for us. And God, we want to align ourselves to be more like you and to be able to trust you. God, I pray that this week you would use us, spread the gospel, share the good news of what Jesus has done for us. And God, we'd be able to be a light in our community. God, we love you so much, and we thank you for what you're going to do this morning. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. To the book of Luke. We're going to be in Luke this morning as we continue our series, The Good Life. So I don't know about you, but I, I like to uh, watch a good movie. And uh, one of the a good movie, one of the movies that I've, I watched uh, has, has been a little while, but one that I really enjoyed. And it was really based on a book by a really profound and deep uh, writer. Uh, the movie was called uh, Horton Hears a Who. Um, so I don't know if you watched that uh, based on the uh, best-selling novel uh, Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. Uh, that's right up my alley. It's perfect. I can't believe I got out of high school, to be honest with you. But anyway, so uh, if you ever watched Horton Hears a Who, it's a great, a great movie, a great little show. And, uh, but the premise of Horton Hears a Who was uh, this elephant, a big elephant, and you know through tradition and uh, through, uh, we don't know if this is accurate, I don't know, it could be accurate, but evidently elephants have good hearing, I'm, I'm assuming that's true, I don't know if it's true or not, but anyway, so Horton was an elephant, he has good hearing, and, uh, and he heard the faint cries of a little village, a little town of, of who's, who people, who it's, I don't know what they're, the who's, uh, on a little flower, a little clover, and so what did Horton do? He picked up the clover and he was holding it and, and he wanted to rescue that little town, that little village of little people found in this little clover. And so, so Horton, he protected it. He tried to keep it safe. He was going to take it to a more safe place. Well, everybody thought Horton was crazy because nobody else could hear the cries and the, the, the talking of the who's. Now, uh, over time, it was a, a perilous journey by this elephant. Just want you to know that. Uh, but eventually what happened was the, the people in that town, the little who's, they all got together and had a plan. And, and they all uh, got together and went up to the highest point of their city. And they began to yell in unison all together, we are here, we are here, we are here. And uh, eventually it was so loud as they yelled out, we are here, it broke that little sound barrier and pretty soon, other people began to hear their voices. Therefore, they were rescued and saved, not just by uh, Horton, but by many others that could hear his voice. Now, you might be asking why I'm telling you the story of Horton Hears a Who. No reason. I just want to share that with you. And uh, let's go. We'll get to the sermon. No, no, really. But I was thinking about Horton Hears a Who. And there's really some spiritual significance in this. Because I was thinking about this idea of the good life that we have. And we're moving into this second part of what this good life looks like. And I don't know if you remember, we talked about how the good life in, in, the, world's, uh, in the world's standards is a little different than the good life that we have as believers. And the good life for believers is found in Jesus. 
Well, as I was thinking about Horton Hears the Who as we're coming into this second part, I started thinking, in our life, we, we run such a, uh, a crazy race in our faith. We're, we're always moving, always going. Uh, there's all kinds of pressures and all kinds of stress and all kinds of anxiety in our life. And as we live out our faith, many times what we find is we find ourselves kind of running on fumes spiritually. We find ourselves wearing down and, and kind of getting on that empty side of, of our lives spiritually and that begins to affect every other part of our life. And, and I was thinking again about the Horton Hears the Who, and, and what I relate it to is this, is that sometimes we get so busy doing all the things that we're supposed to do as church members, as Christians, and we get so involved in our life where it even makes us exhausted and tired and worn down that we forget to listen to the voice of our Lord saying, I am here. I am here. Listen, Jesus says these words to us daily. I am here. But many times in our life we get so busy and caught up in the things that we're doing that we fail to hear the voice of the Lord saying, I am here. This morning we're going to talk about going from empty to energized. We're going to talk about moving from that state of being tired and, and overburdened and worn down, spiritually depleted to a place of passion and energy in our relationship with God. And it all centers around Jesus and the fact that He is here and He's calling out to us to spend time with us daily. So go ahead and open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. We're going to be reading a familiar story to you guys, but I just kept thinking about this story. And, and I'll say this too, you know, God's Word has a profound impact on us and on me, obviously, and for all of us. And so first and foremost, God's Word had an impact. There was another book that uh, for me in ministry uh, that at a certain point where I was uh, worn down on some things, and, uh, and it's a book called Simplify, and, and so by Bill Hybels. And so uh, I, I was truly kind of, uh, spurred on uh, this whole thought of the good life based on some of the things that he was talking about in his book. But one of the things that I want you to hear this morning is uh, as we look at this passage and how important this passage could be for us today as we talk about moving from this E and empty to uh, energized, living a life that God has really called us to live, this good life in Him, full of passion and joy, not running on fumes. And so this passage in Luke chapter 10, uh, starting in verse uh, 38, we're going to talk about the story of Martha and Mary. Uh, and you see two very different and drastic personalities in two people uh, as they are pursuing probably how they are wired and what makes them so unique and so special. I want you to hear this also as we talk about this passage. Understand that this is not a sermon about whether it's important to just meditate and spend time at the foot of the cross all the time or, uh, or, or we need to be serving or not serving. Listen, that's not necessarily the, the main part of this uh, passage. What is about uh, this, this sermon about this passage is the fact that we need to keep the main point the main point. No matter what, how we're wired, no matter what we're doing for the Lord, no matter how we're spending our ministry time, we need to make sure that we stay focused on what's most important. So let's look. Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 38. If you would and you're able, would you stand as we read God's Word this morning? This is what God's Word says in Luke chapter 10. It says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed Him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to His teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power that's found in your word and our prayers that you would just transform us. Holy Spirit, move and work in our hearts and in this place. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now, at first glance, when we read this passage, and maybe you've read this passage many times, and at first glance, it almost seems unfair. 
Uh, it seems unfair that uh, Jesus would be talking to, to Martha like this and, and uh, bringing this up because essentially we, we recognize this. And, and so know that what Martha is doing and how she is serving, that's not the issue. It's not the fact that she is preparing a meal, not the fact that she's being hospitable. Listen, that is how she is wired. Matter of fact, that is how many of us are wired. So we're not all supposed to be up on stage. We're not all supposed to be the the deep thinkers. That's not how many of us are wired. Many of us are wired to be serving, uh, serving food, going to a soup kitchen and working there, Listen, or being behind the scenes, working in the church, coming up here on Wednesdays, preparing meals. Listen, that's how many of us are wired, and that is a beautiful, beautiful place to be in ministry. Many of us, we find we're wired to sit at the foot of, feet of Jesus and, and really take in all the theology and get deep with different kinds of understanding of Scripture. Listen, many people are wired like that also. This, this is not a question of, of service, of how we are wired. Both of these uh, kinds of personalities are very important and very unique, and they're all needed in our church. So there's not a question of what Martha was doing necessarily. It's not a question of what Mary was doing necessarily. But listen, there's something deeper here that I think we're going to focus on this morning that is so important. Because listen, let's face it, Jesus knew who Martha was. Jesus knew what kind of personality she had. Jesus knew what kind of personality Mary had. So I believe this story for us, as we look at the, really the, the main point of this story, is really almost like a, a shot over the, the bow of a ship for us. It can be looked at almost like a warning for us to, to remain uh, with our eyes open and hearts open, to kind of to encourage us to, to, to really focus in on why we do ministry, not just doing the ministry. And so as we look at this, really it comes down to uh, a specific part of this passage, I really think, uh, gets to the, the crux of it all, really, the point of it. And it's this right here. In verse, uh, verse 41, it says, But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. So if you were to boil this story down, it's not about Martha serving, because she was doing a good job. And she was doing, and it was good. It was good ministry. And it's not just about Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. That was, that was incredible. Listen, it's not about just the good ministry, but there's something even better. And Jesus is saying, listen, you are troubled and anxious about many things. But there is one thing that's most important about it all. I want to encourage you today, as we read this story, because we're going to be busy doing the ministry that God has called us to do, and that's good ministry. You're going to be going to Sunday school, you'll be going to small group studies, you'll be going serving at the racetrack, you'll be uh, serving Operation Christmas Child, you're doing all these things coming to church on Sundays and, and Wednesdays. Listen, those are good, good things. Some of you are the kind that work in the kitchen, cleaning in the church, or some of you are doing things up on the stage. Listen, those are good things, but never forget the best thing, and that's Jesus. So no matter what you do and what service you have, listen, that is awesome, but may during your service, may you be focused on why you are serving, and never let that leave you. I love this because what it does, I think it begins pointing out some issues that happens because when we get so busy and we get to do things and doing things for the, for the Lord or doing things for the church and we forget to keep the main thing as the main thing, which is Jesus, what happens is we find ourselves almost burning out. We find ourselves uh, kind of uh, being depleted spiritually because we're doing and doing and doing and not taking the time to replenish in our spiritual life. And so for Martha, she was doing some good stuff. But maybe, just maybe, she was missing the most important part. And it was right in front of her. He was right there saying, I'm here. So I'm just going to ask you the question today, do you feel spiritually depleted today? Do you feel like you've been going and going and doing and doing, but yet 
uh, you, you're lacking some joy and lacking peace because you're kind of running on fumes and you're kind of running on that empty and you need to be filled with Jesus today. Well, I, the, I think this passage is for you. Because there is no worse place to be than spiritually depleted. So I want to take a few moments, let's talk about being spiritually depleted and see maybe if, if we fall into that category. Uh, one is this, if, if you're spiritually depleted, uh, what you find is this, is that it kind of leads to empty ritualism. It, it's empty ritualism in our life. What does that mean? It means you're just going through the motions. So you come to church to check a box, or you go to a life group to check the box, or, or you serve at Raceway, or you, uh, or you uh, come up here and you help out at the church, but it really just turns into checking the box, and you can really see how this works in your life when you come in on a Sunday to worship, and you just kind of go through the motions, and you kind of sing the songs, and you kind of leave, and you walk and look back at your time at church, and you're like, I, I really don't remember much about that, because it didn't mean a whole lot at the time. Listen, it means we're kind of just going through the motions. And can I just say, if we're running on empty spiritually, and and this has nothing to say anything about a person being a good person or not a good person or a good Christian or not a good Christian, listen, we all fall into the category at times of running on empty. And we find ourselves doing this empty ritualism in our life. Are Are you finding yourself just going through the motions? I don't know about you, but I've been to church on a Sunday and I've sang the worship songs and then I've gone home and we'll be talking and be like, so what, what was the songs we sang today? And I couldn't even remember. Why, why is that? Because I'm just going through the motions. That's when you can't even remember the words of the song that you're singing. That means you've taken your eyes off really the focus and you've not made the main point the main point. And so I just want to ask you today, are you finding yourself in this empty ritualism in your life? Another way that we show that we're spiritually depleted in our life, from whatever reasons, whether it's just being busy or family issues or work, whatever it may be, is that being spiritually uh, depleted can be physically costly. If If you're spiritually depleted, it affects you spiritually. Physically, it affects how you act. It affects how you interact. It affects you physically. And, and what I mean by that is this, and, and maybe you see this in your life. When you are spiritually depleted, which means you're lacking spiritual fervor and passion and joy and feeling, what happens when you're lacking there, you're going to start looking other places to be satisfied. And it can be very costly physically. For instance, whether it's, um, you know, some with food, <laughs> that kind of hits close to home, but listen, going to, and, and eating, they, they fill their life with, with that. Some, it's, it could be alcohol, it could be a drug, it could be something else, because they're, they're de- depleted and they're, they're empty spiritually, and so they're wanting, or we are wanting to find something to fill us up. Another area that we find that's very common today is that for believers, especially that are spiritually depleted and empty, they'll find what they need in pornography. Uh, that's very common in, in today. They are lacking something and they find it there. And what, listen, that can be physically costly in your life. When we allow the things of the world to fill us up rather than Jesus, when we start looking for that satisfaction in what's happening in our culture and our world today, listen, what's going to happen, you get to the end of it, and you're going to find yourself more empty than before. And that is devastating for us physically. You can also see it in here in, in kind of your, your attitude. And so if you are critical, uh, if, you're more, if you're grumpy or angry all the time, if you lose your temper so fast, listen, you can a lot of times trace that back to the fact that you're spiritually depleted. Listen, it changes us physically. But not only that, but if you're spiritually uh, depleted, it's not just a physical cost, but you're going to see this relationally. It is relationally toxic to be spiritually depleted, to, to give in to the pressures and be exhausted from all the doing and not filling yourself back up. It is relationally toxic 
And I want to throw this out to you, especially if you are married, but this can be with, with friends or it can be just in the church. Listen, you will never be able to give somebody else something that you don't have. And so if you don't have joy and peace and love overflowing in your life through Jesus, you're not going to be able to show that to your spouse. And so when I talk about being spiritually depleted, that you are running on empty, you know what? It's going to come across in your relationships. So we talk about the idea of being overly critical to somebody else. Listen, that usually starts when we are running on empty spiritually. You know, it's been, and I'm ashamed to say this, but, but I will. Um, so it's been years. I was a youth minister, and, but there, were a, there was about a year where um, it was a rough, rough year <laughs> ministry-wise. And, and almost, it was very overwhelming with, you know, with um, things happening in my life and people upset and things happening. And you know how it is, and uh, you guys experience that in your job too. And it was very overwhelming, but I found myself... Uh, instead of just taking it and, and drawing closer to the Lord, what I found myself was I was retreating. And, and this is one of the worst parts about being spiritually de- depleted. As a Christian, we retreat. Uh, it's retreatism. That's what it's called. And you, instead of going towards Jesus, you fall away from Jesus because you are overburdened and overwhelmed with the stress and anxiety of the world. So you just isolate yourself. You just walk away from, from being close to the Lord rather than go to Him. And we see this all the time in, in Christians. And, you know, you don't want to, and this is a side note, but you don't want to stay at church. You don't want to talk to anybody. You, go, you don't want to go to life group. Listen, this is all a part of retreatism. It's all a part of being burned out or being empty spiritually. I found myself in that predicament where I just didn't want to do anything. I was a youth minister, and I, I didn't really want to be around people. And, and I was struggling with, with just the anxiety and the pressure that was around me. But can I tell you who got the brunt of that? Amy. Amy got the brunt of that. You see, when you are spiritually depleted, you can't give your spouse what they need. You can't give your friends what they need. Matter of fact, you will do opposite. And so when we are spiritually depleted, it is toxic relationally. And so listen, if you find yourself today and you are struggling with relationships, you're overly critical, or maybe you're just finding it hard to even be around people, uh, you just don't want to... Uh, even attempt to do it listen then check your heart because most of the time it really comes from being spiritually depleted when we're overflowing man relationships flourish so that's just kind of a i think the warning that we have and i see this in martha and martha's not bad don't get me wrong at all she's a great servant and she is doing exactly what she's wired to do but listen sometimes we can kind of take our eyes off of what is most important. And I want to challenge you today. Are you spiritually depleted? Are you running on E and you need to be energized? Well, let's look at just a few things. What are some things that we can do to be energized spiritually, to, uh, be, um, to, to be filled up, to overflowing uh, spiritually? Well, number one is this, and if you, if you do have your notes, you can pull those out, but number one is this. Replenish by reconnecting. Replenish by reconnecting. So here is the beauty of the story of Martha and Mary. There is nowhere in that story that Jesus said, I've had it with you, Martha. You're doing all this stuff. You're not paying attention to me. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't say, you're done. I've given you enough chances. It is over. Listen, he just says this, Mary, I mean, Martha, I'm here. I'm here. Let me fill you back up. Listen, it's the same with us. Jesus hasn't left us. He hasn't left the building. He is still calling out to you and to me. And he's saying, I am here. So today, if you are running on spiritual emptiness, If you are depleted and you are tired, whether it's a family issue, whether it's a work issue, whatever it may be that has caused you to get to this point, listen, Jesus is still present and he's saying, I am here. And it is time to replenish and reconnect. 
So I did a wedding uh, last night, and uh, it was a beautiful wedding. It was a great wedding, but it was raining. You, know, you guys know the storm coming through and tornadoes coming through. It was awesome. And, uh, and so, but it was a beautiful wedding, and, uh, and it was raining. And, and listen, I've done several uh, weddings where it started raining, and they're outdoor weddings. And, and really, my first one I ever did when I was, I was pretty young, Amy and I were just pretty much newlyweds, and I did this wedding. I didn't know what I was doing. It was the best thing ever. It was pouring down rain. We're under a gazebo. It came time to let go, the, the doves go. And so I gave this big speech. Your marriage is like these doves, and it's just going to like that. And so I said, release the doves. And they go, and then come right back, right back into the cage. I thought, your marriage is doomed. <laughs> what am I going to say about that? But anyway, this one was a great marriage, you know, it was a great wedding ceremony, but it started raining. and I could just see it on their faces, and they're like so sad because it was raining. I'm like, listen, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. This rain, it replenishes. What a beautiful picture of what Jesus does in our life, replenishes us. Listen, that is true today. He replenishes us when we call on Him. We can reconnect with Jesus. Even if we're feeling so depleted right now, we can call on Him and He is faithful. Psalm 51.10, David says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Why would, why would David, King David, why would David say, a man after God's own heart? Why would he, listen, he says, Create in me a clean heart. Why? Because he needed a clean heart. We know the sin that David had in his life. And he calls out to God and he says, renew a right spirit within me. Why would David cry out, renew a right spirit within me? Because he needed to be renewed. Listen, we are the same. And may we replenish and reconnect with God. He hasn't gone anywhere. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find Knock, and it will be open to you. Listen, He is waiting for us to be intentional and reconnect. I love uh, Matthew 11, where it says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, many of you today, the good life, can I just tell you the good life can be found in resting in Jesus. And, and I'm not talking about mindless um, sitting on the couch watching TV. Okay, that's not rest. That's not what Scripture talks about is rest. Rest is stopping and being with Jesus. It's being with Jesus. And so today, maybe that's how you reconnect. Maybe today is the day to rest. You've been going nonstop. Today you rest. But also recognize and reorganize. The second one is recognize and reorient. Recognize what is distracting you. And I think this is important because it could be your job. You know, if you're working 60, 65 hours a week and there's friction at home and you're feeling depleted, listen, it might be time to recognize what's causing that. Uh, if, listen, if you're having issues with finances and it's causing you stress and anxiety and, but you know it's not being handled right, and, and spiritually, it's depleting you because you're struggling. Listen, you can start to examine those things and start making some changes. But listen, we have to find what's causing us to be distracted. What is causing us to lose focus on the main thing, which is Jesus? And we need to fix it. We need to let Jesus fix it. We need to lay it in his, at His feet and just say, God, I need help making this right. We need to discover what's happening. We need to reorganize. And maybe it's just this. Maybe you look at what's being uh, distracting in your life, and maybe it's uh, you're spending too much, too much time doing a certain thing as opposed to spending time with the Lord. Listen, today is the day to make that change. You know, I think most of us, if we're feeling depleted, if we recognize that we don't have and haven't been spending the time with the Lord that we need to be, I'm pretty sure that we can pinpoint where we spend most of our time. And we may say, and listen, I'm saying this because I've, I'm there, I've been there, and I've said the same thing. I always, I always say, I just don't have the time. But can I just say, and, and listen, I'm just going to throw it out there. You always have time for the things that are important. 
you always have time for the things that are important to you. And so let's, let's examine what's causing us to be distracted, what's, ca- what's causing us to be spiritually depleted. And let's reorganize, let's re- reschedule things to make sure that we are resting in the Lord, that we're getting fed through our time with the Lord, that we are getting filled up by Him. It's just so important. And Psalm 139 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Listen, let, let God examine your heart and, and see what's, what's distracting, what's happening, and, and reorganize. Number th- last one is this. Oh, well, let me go back. I want to go back. I, I, got, I got a few minutes. But listen, um, you know, one of the things... I, I'm just going to throw this out too because it's frustrating to me and and I don't mean to be, uh, well, I mean to be. But anyway, um, you know, I I look on social media and I get on Facebook and I never, I'll just be honest with you, I don't don't ever respond to people. I just know the the perils of responding on social media and I've disciplined myself as much as I can to to not, but I still read it. Um, And and I've come to the conclusion if we spent as much time sharing the gospel on Facebook as we did talking about politics, this world would be different. Can I just tell you that maybe that's consuming our time? Maybe we are spiritually depleted because we've been focusing on Republicans and Democrats for far too long, and we need to focus back in on Jesus. We need to make sure that people hear that this is not the end of the world that Jesus is still on his throne, that it's going to be okay. We need people to hear that there is hope. No matter who's in the White House, there is hope, and hope is found in Jesus. We need to be sharing that more than we need to be sharing our political views. And so can I just encourage you, maybe that is causing spiritual depletion in your life today. Step away from it or reorganize it, and let's start talking about Jesus, and let's see what he can do on social media. Uh, listen, we, can, we have the, the, the power to intentionally set our schedule and, and do what we need to do in order to grow in Christ rather than be distracted. That was free. All right, number three is this. Refuse to return. This is it. Refuse to return. And what I mean by that is this. If you allow the Lord to replenish you, to fill you up, don't go back. Don't go, remember what it was like when you're running on empty and don't ever go back. Do whatever you have to do to stay filled with Jesus, to stay full of Him and what He wants in your life rather than go back to that state of being empty in your life. In 2 Peter in chapter 1, it talks about this growing and maturity in our faith and it it talks about for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or un fruitful. Can I tell you, that's not about just staying put and being comfortable where you're at. It's about growing in the Lord daily. And listen, if we are moving forward closer to Jesus every day, listen, that is, that's a plus. That is a positive in our life that Jesus is continually moving and working in our life. We don't have to go backwards. We can continue to go forwards. Listen, it doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But man, if you're moving forward, then you don't have to worry about what's behind. So listen, can we just say, I want to be filled with Jesus. I want to be replenished by Him. I don't want to run on empty anymore. And I don't want to go back to where I was. Today is the day to decide. I'm I'm different because of Jesus. And I'm not going to go back. Now for... For us as believers, what does that mean? Well, I I think it means that you're going to have to have a time with the Lord. And and maybe you do have a lot of stuff going on and a lot of irons in the fire, whatever that saying is. I'm thinking maybe it's time to set aside some time for Jesus. Jesus. So whatever that looks like for you, 
whether that's in the morning, whether that's at, in the evening. Listen, I, I don't even expect you to go in and, and for an hour be on your knees praying. That's not even what I'm saying. I'm just saying start simple. Maybe for 15 or 20 minutes, maybe read some passages of Scripture. But God wants to spend time with you. Jesus is saying, I'm here, and He wants to replenish you. So let's spend the time getting to know Him. Maybe it's the 20 minutes that you've been spending on Facebook. Maybe that's the time to move off of that and spend time with the Lord. And let Him do a work in your life. Replenish you and rejuvenate you and fill you back up to where you need to be. Listen, your life will change dramatically. How you interact with other people, how you interact in worship, everything will change when we are spiritually overflowing rather than spiritually burning the the fumes in our life. Maybe it's time to find time for the Lord. Now, you, one of the things I've learned about, and I want to challenge you with this. One of the things I've learned about this COVID stuff with school, and our boys had to do this, and, uh, and, it's, and it's been really good for them, is that in order to keep them on track for their classes, because being at home, you know, they can get distracted and do different things. But they set an alarm. And I don't know if your kids do this, but they'll set an alarm. And so when that alarm goes off, they know that it's time for their next class. And they won't miss that class. You know, maybe you need to set an alarm. Maybe you need to set it on your watch, on your phone, whatever it may be. But you set an alarm at the same time on the, you know, every single day so that when it goes off, it's Jesus' time. And you make sure that you go and you spend time with Jesus. Whatever it takes, spend time with Him. Are you running on fumes? Listen, it affects everything about your life. And I'm not saying that as your pastor looking out. I'm saying that as a a person that has run on fumes. (laughs) So listen, it's not a fun place to be. And there's no joy in it. So today, may you make the commitment. May you make the commitment today to renew that passion in Him, to be energized, not empty, and allow the Lord to replenish that joy in your life. And may you never, ever look back. Will you bow your heads? Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us, even in spite of us. God, we know that we're not perfect and we make mistakes every day. We know that there are days that we get overwhelmed with the burdens of this world and we get so busy and preoccupied that we don't spend time with you. God, may we change. May we make you the priority. Before we do anything else, may we make you the priority and everything else will fit. We'll be better when we make you our priority. So for those that are here and online, Father, I pray that if they're, they're running on fumes today, that, that you'd fill them up. That they'd go from empty to, to energized. They'd go from depleted to full. And then they'd never look back. Fill us. We need you. your heads bowed and eyes closed and just for a moment and everyone that's online if you would just for a moment just ask God cry out like David have him create in you a clean heart renew in you that's what we cry out to so Father renew us restore fill us Father, we love you. Thank you. May we come to you. May you fill us up. May we be overflowing with joy and peace. May it change our life. And may you get all the glory for it. May people see you in us as we live out our faith. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Well, thank you guys for uh, being here this morning and uh, online. If, if you guys have um, a decision that you have made in the Lord or a question about what it means to follow Jesus or accept Jesus in your life as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to help you with that. We'll be here after this service, uh, and we'd love to talk to you about that online. If you have a question for us or if you've made a decision for the Lord and want to know how to grow in your relationship with Jesus or you want to know what it means to join our church, Hampton First Baptist Church, you can connect with us here at the church, you can come by and see us, or you can go online uh, and connect with us through that. Uh, there's so many ways to get with us, and one of those is an email, prayer at hamptonfbc.org. You can always connect with us there, uh, but you can also connect with us individually, too. All that's found on our website. But we'll be here. We'd love to talk with you and pray with you. If you have any thoughts, any questions about what God's doing in your life, uh, we'd love to help you with that. So, guys, thanks uh, for being here. I hope God has spoken to your heart. Before we uh, dismiss, I know... Uh, Becky uh, has uh, something that she wants to do, a personnel committee. Uh, I think there's a quick video. Hi, hi, we're, hi, hey, we're the good guys. We're, we're so glad to be with you guys. This is so great. Uh, we're going to take this minute to say uh, thank you to uh, all the fans out there who are so far. I can't understand. I, 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 the ma- I can't, I can't hear. What are you talking about? No, I just can't hear what you're know. saying. We got to do this right. Okay, fine. <sighs> oh, 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 that's much better. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like wearing these because it just reminds me of what I put the rest of the world through. Oh, oh Brad. Oh, oh, yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, uh, my name's Tommy Woodard. My name is Eddie James, and we are the Skid Guys. And pastors, we just want to say we appreciate you so much. Thank you for what you do, especially during 2020. What a weird year. Mm. What an unusual year. But you have navigated these waters so great. You're kind of like Moses. You have led the people (laughs) through the wilderness. That's really true, though. You know what it's like to take a congregation through all of these different things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) Good job, Ed. Yeah. Hey, buddy, why don't you put that mask back on? (sighs) Okay. Does that make you feel a little safer? It allows me not to smell your breath. (laughs) It can't be that. (laughs) It is. Yeah. God, Mm. I never noticed it until now. Phew. Mm. Golly, when's the last time I brushed Pastors, we sure appreciate you. Of October is Pastor Appreciation Month, but today is Pastor Appreciation Day. Craig, come on up here for a moment. Um, We just want to tell you thank you so much for your ministry. You know, when the world started to shut down, um, you continued to keep us engaged, um, connected, and in God's Word, and we appreciate that so very much. And um, thank yous, you know, what, one of the greatest things about thank yous is they're free. They don't cost you a thing. So we just want to say thank you for everything that you've done for us, Pastor Craig. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that so much. No, I'm just kidding. But no, thank you. We really do appreciate that. And uh, really, you should be clapping for Amy because she puts up with me. So um, we did. Yeah, there you go. That's true. That is so true. But uh, we, I, Amy and I love you guys and love being here. We love this church. And uh, this is our home. This is our family. And so we're grateful for you and love every minute being here. And so thank you for loving us and loving our family so well. And uh, there's never been a day. And, and I can say this with honesty, there's never been a day uh, that we've ever regretted coming to Hampton First Baptist Church. We love it here. This is the place God has called us, and uh, we're going to continue moving forward, and uh, we're just looking forward to that. I do want to say this. You guys um, have the best staff um, that, I mean, ever. And I want to say that because, listen, we could not do anything. I couldn't do anything here without our staff, uh, without our other pastors here. Listen, they do an incredible job. And so I want to just encourage you. Yeah, give them a clap. <laughs> they, uh, they are they're the, the pros at everything we do. And, and I've heard it over and over again. I'll just say this from other pastors, other places. When they look at what we did during, during COVID-19 and all that stuff, how we, our ministries kept going, 
all of them said, not me, but they said, your staff is amazing. And they really are. They work so hard and they continue to work hard. So I'm grateful for them. So if you get a chance, uh, let them know that you love them and you're grateful for them in every facet of our ministries here. Uh, there's some in here. Woody's right there, I know. Uh, and, and Stephen's back there and Shane, uh, uh, Christy, somewhere around there. Listen, all of our leaders here have done such an incredible job. And so make sure uh, that you give them a hug. Let them know that you appreciate them and uh, that you're grateful for them. I know I am, and I'm um, just so happy to, to have them on my team. So, all right, well, thanks, you guys, for being here. Let me pray, and we'll dismiss, and uh, I hope you have a great Sunday, and uh, we'll, we'll continue uh, pressing on. How about that? Let's pray. God, thank you for today. We love you. You're an amazing God, and as we walk out of these doors, give us strength to be your light. Wherever you plant us, may we be your light, and may we shine bright. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.